right, so let's talk rockets. Uh, the DIU chose relativity for its, quote, responsive access to space capabilities. We're talking about your first rocket that's been developed or is in development, Terran 1, which is almost completely 3D printed. Um, when are you going to get that to orbit? What's the game plan? Sure. So relativity was founded to 3D print entire rockets. So we're actually in our factory here in Long Beach building the world's first entirely 3D printed rocket. That's launching to orbit from our launch site at Cape Canaveral at the end of this year. Yeah, and you've also announced in the last couple of weeks plans for uh, another rocket, um, a more powerful rocket as well. That's right. So we're also building a Falcon 9 size fully reusable rocket that'll be 3D printed on the same factory. So really, when looking at aerospace factories for the last 60 years, they haven't fundamentally changed. Every factory you walk into is still building products one at a time by hand with big, complicated fixed tooling and capex with millions of individual piece parts. So 3D printing is really a, an entirely new tech stack that Relativity is pioneering for a whole rocket. So we've built the world's largest metal 3D printers. We actually design and develop our own rockets. And then we're building uh, the, this fully 3D printed rocket platform as a factory to not just build Terran 1, the rocket we're going to launch to orbit and, and have nine customers signed for already before ever flying, but also building this fully reusable rocket uh, with a long-term vision of one day building products and, and rockets on Mars. Yeah, I mean, your company has been a fan favorite uh, among the VC community, I think in part because of the space plans you have afoot, but also because of those 3D, those additive manufacturing capabilities as well. Uh, just last week, somebody you used to work for over at Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos, touring your factory floor, your factory of the future too. Um, I guess talk to us about what future investment in the company could potentially look like and why someone like Jeff Bezos would be uh, making a visit. Yeah, of course. Well, we, we've raised nearly $700 million to date, uh, including a half a billion dollar funding round last fall that we raised privately from Tiger Global, Fidelity, Bailey Gifford, and other leading uh, private tech investors. So what's fantastic about that is we're able to stay private. Uh, we, we've really been able to keep our heads down, building this first orbital rocket. And then I, I did used to work at Blue Origin as a propulsion development engineer and actually started the metal 3D printing division there. Um, so that's really how I got into rockets plus 3D printing, but very quickly saw that everyone was just doing bits and pieces of a whole rocket when the reality is there's hundreds of thousands of individual parts. So doing an entire rocket from the top down, like we're doing at Relativity, is, is more akin yeah. to going from internal combustion engines and gas architecture to electric or on-premise servers to cloud. And so yeah. what we're building is really the future tech stack of aerospace, uh, starting with rockets. It's interesting to hear your comments just now about staying private, because we have seen um, this growing class of space startups that are going public via SPAC. I wonder what you think about that and if that's something that could be at some point in your future. Yeah, of course. So certainly lots of uh, enthusiasm and investor alignment with space companies is fantastic for the overall industry. So people are doing SPACs um, almost weekly in our sector right now. We chose to stay private when we raised our funding round last fall because that really let us be heads down and, and not have the, uh, the visibility of, of being public today. But certainly there's options uh, you know, out there and things that we'll look to in the future uh, as we keep growing. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.